Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I'm here because I want to improve my English. We do so, you and I, we do so by learning few new words every day and thereby expanding our vocabulary. The very first word that I want to cover is actually something that crops up when I'm dealing with math portion of this exam, the GRE, the GMAT, and the SAT. Sometimes people get confused uh, uh, by this particular word that, I'm, that, that I want to talk about first. Let me first put the word on the blackboard. Co Quotient is the word, but let me first, but perhaps I shouldn't have put it on the blackboard because now I just almost gave the game away. Uh, some, let's, let's, if you ask somebody uh, to, to give them a number, to, gi to give you a number, a number, let's give me a number, uh, so that when I divide it by 5, I get a remainder of 3. Give me a number, so that when I divide by 5, I get a remainder of 3. And what I hear, there are, there are many such numbers, but what I hear sometimes by, from some people, is uh, a number such as, well, not numbers or rather, <coughs> not numbers rather, because these people who are confusing the concept of the remainder and the concept of the quotient, for those people, there exists only one number, and the number that they come up with is 15, like this. And they would tell you the answer is 15. 15 divided by 5 equals 3, and therefore they would say the answer is 15. They are confusing the concept of remainder with quotient. Quotient, what is a quotient? Let's write down the definition. What is a quotient? A quotient is the answer or the result one gets when, when one divides one number by the other. For example here, the one number that is being divided by the other, the one number that is being divided is 15. That number 15 is being divided by 5. When one number is being divided by the other, the answer that we obtained at the end, the result that we get, is called quotient. So 15 was not the right answer. 15 is not what we're looking for because we're looking for a number. In this case, people, it's one more time, people who confuse this concept of quotient with the concept of remainder, for them, there is only one answer because only 15 divided by 5 will give you an answer of 3. So they think there is only one answer. But for the questions, the way it was phrased, give me a number so that when I divide by 5, I get the leftover, the remainder of 3. There are infinite possibilities. You just take any multiple of 5, add 3 to it, and divide by 5, this will give a remainder of 3. So with this, 10, 10 plus 3 divided by 5 will have a remainder of 3. 15, 15 plus 3 divided by 5 will have a remainder of 3, and so on and so forth. Why would it have a remainder of 3? Because it is by design. I'm taking a number which is a multiple of 5, 15, and then I'm adding 3 to it, thereby forcing it so that when we do this out, we will have a remainder of 3. 3 and 3 fifth. 2 and 3 fifth. 1 and 3 fifths. And these, these three that you see there, 3 fifths, 3 fifths, these three that you see there are the remainder. These on the other hand, 1 is a quotient. This is a quotient. This is a quotient. Let's put Q underneath them. These are called quotient. So don't confuse the two concepts yourself. The second word that I want to cover, it wasn't the word actually I was planning to cover. I, I, it wasn't something I was, I was looking for. But when I opened the dictionary and, and, and looked up the word quotient properly and so forth, it appears to us, the word quotient appears towards the very end of the letter Q in the dictionary, the very end in the entry. And right above this is another word, which is a good word to know. The word is quotidian. So I want to talk about that next. Quotidian 
because you may have heard of quotidian existence. But then again, you may not have heard of it, who knows. The word is quotidian. Quo -te -in. It's an adjective. What does it mean? Quotidian simply means recurring every day. It just means commonplace. A quotidian existence, as I said, could be described as a Existence is sometimes described as a humdrum, humdrum routine, something that is monotonous. Something that is monotonous, something that is without change, without variation. without excitement, something that is dull and uninteresting, something that is dull and uninteresting. That's what quotidian means. A job could be described as quotidian. Uh, anything that is uh, dull, monotonous, repeating itself, with a uh, very predictable, can be described as a quotidian uh, task or quotidian existence. The next two words that I'm going to talk about, and that was it. The word quotidian has nothing to do with the word that we learned before, quotient. They are not related at all. In case you're curious, the quotidian has two parts here. The prefix code, which, which means as many as, and the second part, the suffix dien, is where the Spanish word, where the, where the Latin word dies come from, which means day. So literally it means as many, as, as many days, or uh, in other words, something that happens daily. Day after day is what, uh, what it means figuratively. Do you understand? The next two words I want to talk about are, let's say I need to raise it. are simple words for most of you, but I wanted to cover it because sometimes uh, some people may not have seen it. Ledge or spell. It's an adjective. Something legible is something, something that can be that can be read. If you can read it, if you can read it, it's called legible. Sometimes somebody's handwriting is described as illegible. So the antonym would be the antonym would be illegible. That means something that can not be read. If the handwriting is described as illegible, uh, it cannot be read. Uh, sometimes the doctors and lawyers, they have handwritings which are very difficult to decipher. That was it. Legible and illegible. Let's move on then. The next word. The next word I want to talk about is something also I covered a few, uh, few times before. The word is P 
be null to mint. The null to mint. Now when I say a word that I've covered a few times before in the past, it does not mean that I actually covered them like I'm covering it right now. What I meant by that is that this word, uh, there are some words that crop up in the lectures in the past and uh, I put them on the side to make a note to myself to cover them in the future. This was one such word that appeared that cropped up uh, in the past a few times, penultimate uh, letter in the, in, the, in, the, in a word or penultimate chapter or even penultimate uh, uh, oh, anything as a matter of fact. It just means next to last. I haven't actually told you yet, have I? Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. I did not realize that I haven't I hadn't told you until now what it means actually. It just means second to the last. Next to last. So in a whole series of uh, things, uh, you may have the penultimate chapter, which is which means second to the last chapter. Are you almost finishing the book? Yes, I am. I am at the penultimate chapter. I am at the second to the last chapter. Or penultimate letter in the in a, in a word. For example, in this word here, S, as described as the penultimate letter, is the second to the last letter. That, that was it. The next word I want to talk about, that was it. Let's move on to something else. What does it mean? I don't know if you heard of it or not, but what does it mean? What is, what is a a nub of an argument, or if you like, a nub of a story. What is a nub? Ever heard of it? Very simple pronunciation, there's nothing to it. Just like it says, there are no trick to it, it's very straightforward pronunciation. What is a nub? It is a noun, first of all. That's, it's a noun. And what does it mean? A nub is simply a gist of a, of a, a gist of a story, gist of a sentence, gist of an argument. It's just a gist, it's the essence of something. It's the core of something. It's the central idea. It is the main idea. Or if you like, it is the crux of the argument. So if somebody is asking you the nub of the story, or if they say, tell you that is the nub of the argument, uh, that is the essence of the argument, that is the gist of the argument, that is the core of it, that is the central idea, that is the central theme of the whole story, of the whole argument, whatever it is that they're talking about. And that essence, the gist of an argument, is described as the nub, N-U-B nub. That was it for today. That was day, uh, day number 11. We'll keep at it. We'll learn a few words every day. And uh, hopefully, uh, you and I will uh, help each other in expanding our vocabulary. Why am I doing this thing? Because it helps me formally learn the words that I've been wanting to learn for many years and I just never bothered to actually sit down and learn them formally. Now I'm doing it because I'm being forced. I'm being forced because I have, uh, I have to put these videos every day and therefore I have to sit down and, and learn, learn them properly, look them up in the dictionary properly, look up the pronunciation properly. Even though it's a simple word, I always put the pronunciation to make sure that uh, sometimes you can't go by the way the word, something, uh, word look. Uh, so the, the, the way they look and the way they are pronounced sometimes are very different. Uh, many a times I made a fool of myself where being a non-native speaker uh, I would look at the word and just try to pronounce it just the way it's written but a lot of the times that is not the case the way you pronounce a word and the way it is spelled are not usually the same way uh, and I have learned it the hard way that lesson and since then I have made a point of uh, putting the pronunciation next to each letter each word every time just to make sure, you see, just to be on the safe side, just to cover my derriere, as, uh, uh, if, if you will. Anyway, that was the end of it. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor uh, over the internet via Skype. I do face-to-face -face tutoring, obviously, in New York and Connecticut area, in New York City area, and so forth. And I also do tutoring over the telephone. I, would, I tutor 
for these subjects which you see there, these exams, these tests, the GRE, the GMAT, the SAT, and the TOEFL. You can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email, or you can go to kashwaniprev.com and send me an email. Let me know what you need help in, and I'll be more than happy to work with you. Alright, thanks.